morning, sir. Yeah, you can start the presentation. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about the... Uh, good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk, ab uh, talk about the intraocular lens. So what are intraocular lens? Intraocular lens are the artificial lens uh, which are implanted in the eye after cataract extraction. So uh, start with the history of it. First, Italian scientist Tadini in mid 18th century first considered intraocular lens implantation. Later in 1975, Casamata implanted glass IOL, which sang posteriorly. And then English ophthalmologist Sir Nicholas Harold Redley is credited for first successful eye implantation on November 29, 1949 at St. Uh, Thomas Hospital in London. So uh, he is considered as the father of the intraocular lenses. Since then, evolution of the intraocular lens occurs in the generation. So uh, first, there was a first generation. It was Redley IOL. It was biconvex PMMA. Then second generation, rigid and semi-rigid AC uh, entry chamber IOL. Then third generation, uh, iris clip lens and iris claw lenses. In fourth generation, improvised AC IOL, that is the intermediate AC IOL with Kelman multiplex. In the fifth generation, it was uh, posterior chamber IOLs. In the sixth, it was for foldable IOL. In the seventh, eight, it is premium and fake IOLs. So uh, then the classification of intraocular lenses. So it is based on uh, multiple things, uh, starting from the position. Uh, in the position, it is based on capsular blood uh, placement, ciliary sulcus, scleral fixation, iris fixation, angle supported. Then the material, it is available as rigid, flexible, in the foldable hydrophobic and hydrophilic acrylic and collamer lens. In the design, it is available as three piece and one piece. In the optical shape, biconvex, plano convex. In the optical function, such as the spherical, aspheric, multifocal, toric, and extended ridge. In the optical color, transparent and tinted, with, uh, with haptic properties three piece or one piece. And type of packaging preloaded, not loaded. So uh, dis uh, let's discuss about brief about the generations. So first generation one from the 1949 to 1954. It was Redley IOL. It is a, it was biconvex PMMA PC IOL implanted behind the iris after extra capsular cataract extraction. It was without haptic with a diameter of 8.32 millimeter, but with the complication, inferior decentration, posterior dislocation, inflammation, secondary glaucoma. So uh, then further improvised to generation second, in which uh, IOL is placed in the uh, early anterior chamber. So fixation of lens occurs in the angle recess. So its uh, advantages was less decentration and decreased reaction. With the complication, it uh, mainly caused the, the corneal complications such as the corneal decompensation, pseudophagic bul uh, bulba, bulba keratitis, uitis, secondary glaucoma, and UGS syndrome. Then improvised to the generation third from the 1953 to the 1975, it was iris supported or iris fixated IOLs by the iris uh, supported by the Binghurst and iris claw lenses by the worst. So its advantages were it is always from angle structures, hence rate of complications like secondary glaucoma is less. Rate of uh, dislocation is less with the complication, iris chaffing, pupillary distortion, chronic inflammation, cystoid macular edema and endothelial decompensation. Further improves to the generation four from uh, 1963 to 1990, it was intermediate anterior chamber IOL which is improvised uh, anterior chamber IOL, made up of flexible loop with multiple point of fixation. It was more stable with lesser complications. Examples were Troyes, Mark 9, Kelman, and Kelman Multiplex, Kelman Flexible Tripod, Intermediate Dubrov, Modern One Piece Flexible. Nowadays, we uh, sometimes we use Kelman Multiplex AC IOL. Then generation five from 1975 to 1990, it was improved posterior chamber IOL with the designs, uh, rigid tripod design, uh, like the first design, then J-loop PCRL, modified J-loop PCRL, C-loop uh, PCRL, and one-piece PCRL. The major advantage of this generation was the position, as it was placed in the back. Its advantages were proper anatomical site, minimal magnification, low incidence of lens disintegration and dislocation. Still, it has some complications, such as the poster capsule opacification, photopic effects such as the halos, glare photo, pho photopsia, with the higher order operations, capsular contraction, requirement of glasses for near. So to prevent this complication, 
Further, we improvised into the material designs, a sparsity, focal points, and accommodation. So for that, better designs needed for better visual outcomes. <clears throat> then comes the material used for the intraocular lenses. It was rigid material and flexible material. In the rigid material, it is the PMMA, that is polymethyl methylethylate. And the uh, flexible, uh, flexible material, it was silicon, hydrophobic acrylic, hydrophilic acrylic, and hydrogen. So first is rigid material, uh, polymethyl methacrylate. It is a rigid, inert, inert, non-autoclavable material. It was first material used. It is hydrophobic in nature with water content less than 1%. With refractive index 1.49, it is a thin lens, single piece with optic diameter of 5 to 7 mm. It is chemically stable and with a low cost. Its disadvantage is, it is rigid and it requires a large incision to insert in the eye. So next is flexible oil material. First is silicon. So silicon is a polymer of silicon and oxygen. It is the first material used for the foldable intraocular lens with a refractive index 1.41, with the optic diameter 5.5 to 6.5. Current models available are uh, three-piece with PMMA, PVDF, polyamide haptics. It has thick optic lens and large incision. So uh, silicon aisles have few advantages and more disadvantages. Advantages like less chances of PCO with good resistance for MDR glazer. And disadvantages such as more chance of dislocation, enter capsule rim opacify quickly, glistening, not preferred in silicon filled eye or my, uh, high myopic eye, and favor bacterial adherence post of infection. So nowadays, uh, we mostly do not use the silicon IOLs. So we use mostly acrylic IOLs. These are the hydrophilic and hydrophobic. So hydrophilic is made up of mixture of hydroxy ethyl metha acrylate and hydrophilic acrylic monomer. It contains 18 to 26% water. It is easy handling with the risk of postal capsule opacification high. Whereas hydrophobic is made up of copolymer of acrylate and methacrylate, minimal water absorption with a good resistor of YAG laser and it, uh, the PCO rate in this is a lower. Next is hydrogel intraocular lenses. These are swell in water with the 18 to 38% water content. Copolymers of methacrylate esters. Hydrophilic monomer with the hydroxyl functional group such as the MEMA. Then I uh, come to the IOL design. So IOL, uh, IOL is distributed as optic and haptic. Optic is a part of the lens that focuses light on the retina. So there are the multiple designs such as the biconvex, planoconvex, spheric, aspheric, toric, multifocal, and trifocal. In the haptic, small filaments connected to the optic that hold the lens in position. So there are different designs of the optic such as the open loop, in the open loop it is C loop, J loop, modified J loop, or then plate style, then ang uh, angulated haptics. Then come to the aspheric design. So aspheric design of intraocular lenses designed to reduce the spherical abrasions. Naturally in the um, anatomy of the eye, cornea has the positive spherical abrasions and lens has the negative spherical abrasions. So in the young uh, males, it is balance as a positive and negative spherical abrasion, so there is no any effect. But at the age advances, there is a uh, increase in, uh, in, increase in the lens with the increase in refractive power, which results in positive spherical abrasions. So it reduces the contrast sensitivity. So in the older age group, it is more. So to, to eliminate the uh, spherical abrasions, they invented the uh, spherical design. So uh, aspherical designs are two types that uh, negative aspherical design and with zero uh, aspherical. Then uh, examples are anterior pro prolate surface that is uh, technis, then posterior prolate surface that is acris of IQ uh, from the alcon, and then both anterior and posterior surfaces acris AO from the Bosch and Long. Then come to the premium IOLs. So these are the multifocal, trifocal, toric intraocular lenses then extended depth of focus and accommodative. So multifocal intraocular lenses, this concept was by Hopper, implanted by Payas. It is the IOL with two or more focal points. It is based on optical de uh, design and uh, physical properties. It has two types, refractive and diffractive. So first is refractive optics multifocal IOL. So here, uh, anterior surface have ring or sector shape optical zones with different dipteric power. 
thus helping distance and near ray focus uh, focus on the retina and it is available in the two uh, two styles like you can see in the first image it is a two zone lenses which have a central near vision segment and distance surrounding vision segment and it is also known as the bifocal and second is annular type that this lens has a three concentric segments that is inner segment is distant then uh, middle segment is near vision and outer segment is distant vision so is the same image with the central distant dominant zone then uh, large near dominant zone in the yellow then uh, distant dominant zone with the low light in the pink and the near zone and distant zone then comes the diffractive optics of uh, multifocal iol so uh, diffract its principle is it utilizes diffraction in conjugation with the refraction to create a new focus so uh, it causes refraction by the anterior surface and diffraction by the posterior surface with multiple groups example of this are technicus uh, technicus multifocal iol zm900 uh, silicon best iol and z800 acrylic best iol with the optic diameter 6 mm and its diffractive power for near is plus 4 adapter so difference between the refractive multifocal iol and diffractive multifocal iol so refractive multifocal iol is excellent intermediate and distant vision with a fair near vision whereas in the diffractive excellent reading vision and very good distant vision with a fair intermediate vision the refractive uh, multifocal iol is a pupil dependent and diffractive multifocal iol is less pupil dependent so some of the examples of that first is a uh, restore sa60 d3 by alco it is a diffractive type it's a spherical and uh, with acrylic material second is technis multifocal amo which is a diffractive lens with a, a silicon material and it is a non spherical in structure then uh, rezoom amo it is a refractive with a uh, acrylic material and it's a spherical with five zones and then as a x me1 hoya lens it is refractive and it is a, a <coughs> spherical in structure with acrylic material so what are the disadvantages of the multifocal iol so uh, there is a loss of contrast sensitivity glare and halos scattering of light at dividing light uh, line of different zones then less satisfactory visualization of the fundus and requires visual cortical neural adaptation so further there is a classification of a multifocal iols so first is bifocal trifocal and uh, extended depth of focus bifocal is for the near and far which is not uh, mainly used nowadays so uh, trifocal is for the near far and intermediate and uh, extended depth of focus is a extended far focus area which reaches intermediate distance so trifocal iol it provides a intermediate vision over bifocal iols improved performance in the photopic phenomena than bifocal its examples is first is a uh, first image shows the acris of iq panoptics iol then uh, second is atlas at try 839 mp uh, with the plate uh, plate haptic and third is indian iol that is tried it then it comes extended depth of focus extended depth of focus lens create a single elongated focal point to enhance the depth of focus so it used the two technologies a like diffractive optical design and the achromatic technology which reduces the eye chromatic abrasions so the iol uh, this iol have an aspheric anterior surface and posterior a chromatic diffractive surface so its examples are technis symphony which is a first fd approved lens and second is activis of iq vt so basically it uses the uh, principle of diffraction which causes the elongated focus and results in the intermediate vision uh, uh, with the near and far vision so what is difference between the multifocal iol and ed of iol so in the multifocal iol we have the blurred vision at the far blurred vision at the near while in the ed of we have the sharp vision in the far and the near in the multifocal we have halos glare uh, whereas in ed of it does not generate halos then in multifocal iol we require a neural adaptation whereas in ed of we do, don't require a neural adaptation and uh, the level of acceptance is low in the multifocal whereas in the ed of the level of acceptance is high so then comes the toric iol so toric iol are astigmatic correcting iol and are indicated in patients with more than one diopter of regular astigmatism 
It's the first Doric aisle is, was non-foldable three-piece and was introduced by the Shimizu. So uh, patient selection, aisle calculation, and post of lens stability are the key features for the success of Doric aisle. So it mainly indicated in the patients in regular astigmatism and good visual potential with no other ocular pathologies. So there are two types of the toric IOL. These are the acrylic and silicon. Um, we, we use acrylic nowadays. That is uh, examples as Acrisoft toric IOL and Acrisoft IQ toric IOL from the Alcon. Then Pflex Rainer and Acri Comfort from the Gs. Then comes the accommodative IOLs. So accommodative IOLs, these IOLs afford both near and distant vision with the help of haptics, which can flex, as we can see uh, in the uh, image that it flexes and the lens expands and contracts within the capsular bag along with the contraction of the ciliary muscles. So when whenever there is a uh, ciliary muscle contraction, IOL moves forward with the, uh, then there is a, 0.7 mm anterior movement, which causes the one adapter increase in the refractive power. So types of accommodative IOL are the single optic and dual optic. In the sim uh, single optic, it is designed to undergo forward movement of the optic and variation optic and variation of radius of curvature of the anterior surface. So examples are in the silicon, it is a crystal lens by Bosch and Lons. And in the hydrophilic acrylic, it's a biocomfort type 43E, ICU, and tetraplex. In the dual op optic, it is uh, increased separation of the two optics, not available commercially. Example is synchrony, as shown, is the as shown in the image. Then there is a Akka lens intraocular lens, which is accommodative intraocular lens, known as Akko lens or Lumina IOL. It is based on the principle of the Alvarez lens, in which two sinusoidal optical surfaces slide across one another along the horizontal axis. Entry element with the spherical lens, and it has two or, or cubic optical surfaces for very focal effect, which causes, uh, it, they are fitted spring-like haptics fused at the rim and movement perpendicular to the optical axis. So they, uh, these are implanted in the sulcus with the two adapter to fire adapter of near add power. So uh, for the knowledge only, uh, there are curvature changes IOLs in the accommodative IOL. There are four different designs are under development, such as the power vision, fluid vision, IOL, medium smart lenses, new lens, accommodative IOL, and polymer refilling technique. Then come to the newer IOLs. So newer IOLs, first is a piggyback uh, intraocular lens. It's a uh, intraocular lens that piggy piggybacks onto an existing intraocular lens or two intraocular lenses are implanted simultaneously. So first intraocular lens is uh, placed in the capsular part and the second IOL is placed in the back or sulcus. But it comes with the complications such as the intralenticular opacification which causes red rock syndrome and unpredictable final IOL position. Then second come uh, the aniridia IOLs. The lens, the lens has a central clear zone, which corrects the refractive error, and peripheral opaque zone, which reduces the entry of light and acts as an iris diaphragm. So this diaphragm reduces the glare and photophobia. Then comes the uh, rollable uh, intraocular lenses. These are ultra-thin 100 uh, micron lenses, hydrophobic material, uh, front surface is curved, and back surface has a series of steps with concentric rings. It was first implanted by the... Uh, Fekunit technique by the Dr. Amar Agrawal. Then comes the Fekki IOL. So the uh, Fekki implantation of this IOL, implantation of intraocular lens without uh, removing natural crystalline lens known as the Fekki IOL. So they preserve the natural accommodation. The three models of uh, Fekki IOLs are, are available. So first is angle, angle supported lens. Uh, iris fixated lens and third is posterior chamber lens that is sulcus supported. So in angle supported lens is the actress of cashew which is uh, placed in the angles. Then uh, iris fixated lens, these are the uh, artisan iris cloths or varicell lenses. Then third is posterior chamber lenses that are the sulcus supported. Two mo models available in it. First is fakic refractive lenses uh, from the IOL tech of Siba vision which is not uh, used nowadays. And second is implantable collamer lens uh, that is from the Vision ICL V4. 
so recent advances on the future of the eye wells include uh, three eye wells that is light adjustable intraocular lenses then telescopic intraocular lenses and electronic intraocular lenses so first is light adjustable intraocular lenses this lenses works on the principle of a piston the haptic optic junction is a piston such as that the optic can be moved forwards or backwards it allows the multiple adjustment and useful for the pediatric age group second is implantable miniature or telescope uh, intraocular lenses uh, these are the uh, miniature implantable gallium telescope implanted in posterior chamber held in position by the haptic loops and contain number of micro lenses which magnify objects in the central visual field and these are mostly uh, used in the patients of um, armd so uh, drawbacks are surgically more challenging difficulty due to the size and weight of the implant endothelial compromise and loss of the peripheral vision third uh, is electronic iol was first implantable lens with artificial intelligence the concept is the pupil responds to accommodation by getting smaller the iol includes sensor that detects very small changes in the pupil size the pupillary response to accommodation is different from the pupillary response to light in regard to amplitude and how rapidly it works in response to accommodation thank you sure go back to the light adjustable iol slide This is a different uh, lens we are talking about, I think. We got light adjustable lens doesn't work on the principle of piston. Basically, there is a polymer which uh, you use a UV light of particular wavelength okay. to uh, yeah to change the properties of that polymer. And based on that, you can change the refractive index of the lens inside. You can also create patterns which... Uh, mimic uh, edop file also inside the eye once the eye is placed in the patient's eye then after a week or two weeks uh, you can do the adjustments and i think adjustments can be done only once so till that time patient has to wear the uv protected glasses and uh, once the refractive error stabilizes and uh, if patient is happy with the current refractive status it is fixed at the same status if uh, there is any refractive error it is corrected if uh, they want to try monovision, then also that can be done in the light adjustment. So I think this is some different IOL you have talked about. Yes, sir. So I'll check about it. The rest of it is okay. I think more of historical data. Uh, newer things, I think next time you have to take each IOL and uh, describe how it works. Because there are a lot of IOLs in the last 5 to 10 years which are not mentioned in the presentation. And also a few things like, uh, for example, the slide where multifocal is compared with EDOF, uh, the regarding the acceptance, I think trifocals also are accepted quite easily by most of the patients. Uh, so it's not much of a difference. Uh, the main difference between EDOF and uh, trifocals is the kind of dyspotopsia patients experience. So. With uh, multi trifocals or multifocal, there are little bit of uh, glares which are there. Uh, glares are usually not seen in uh, the id of IOS except the diffractive id of like uh, the symphony. So symphony is a diffractive id of, so it has glares. But most no non diffractive id of, they do not have glares. They have little bit of halos which are there, but they are less compared to the trifocals. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Okay. Any other questions from anyone? Okay, well, how to uh, measure the depth of focus of these IOLs? I trust, sir. That is a that is an objective depth of focus. But how do you measure subjective depth of focus? So with the intermediate near and distance which visual eye. How do you no, no that is not how you measure. The intermediate distance visual acuity depends on the patient's potential visual acuity. So patient is six by four, then patient's intermediate and near will be better. But if patient is six by nine potential vision, then it will be less. So it's that is not how we measure depth of focus. 
Manisha's thesis is on this, na? so she has read about measurement of depth of focus. She has joined. She has joined. So she has joined her online. Okay, she is not there, I think. Okay, uh, so read about it, how to measure depth of focus and post on the group, okay? Yes, sir.